Hello friends, I hope your day is off to a great start. Um, today's video is actually all based on your feedback. I asked on Instagram, what's the most worthwhile luxury purchase you've made recently? The most irreplaceable product where you feel like, yeah, I spent some money on that, but it was completely worth it. Um, I wanted your feedback on this, and then I thought I'd go through and look for the most common responses and build a full face out of that. One thing that I definitely saw quite a few times, and I know I've recommended it as well, is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face space. I think this is my third one, and as you can see, I'm already down to the bottom. I do love this product quite a bit. I think it's a rich moisturizer, but it's a great way to prep the skin before makeup. Everything really feels so plumped and hydrated and smooth. Now, I'm not one who lives life exclusively in the luxury makeup realm. As you know, I like to come up with things that might be similar, might give you a similar feel or experience applying them to the skin at a lower cost. So, I mean, I've mentioned the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream. I've mentioned the ColourPop or Fourth Ray, um, the Daily Facial Moisturizer. I think those are both a couple of nice, um, rich feeling moisturizers that you can wear under makeup. But that being said, this does have a special quality to it. The thickness of the moisturizer, I think for anyone normal to dry, this is a really great feeling on the skin. Um, you get just an instant kind of radiance boost by putting it on. I do love the special smell. Oh, it kind of wakes you up in the morning, a little bit citrusy. Not quite enough to fully wake you up, but you know, it's starting to get you there. I'm gonna need the coffee to take care of the rest of that. For foundation, um, this was a big one. I saw this one mentioned a lot. It's the newest one from NARS, the Soft Matte Complete Foundation. Um, I had recently spoken about in a favorites video how I was coming back to the Natural Radiant Longwear. I do love that one. But this is also a tremendous foundation. I think one of the strongest points for this is the staying power. I believe it was the tail end of summer when this came out and the weather was still very hot where I live. And I remember just going out on walks and sweating and then coming back and feeling like, wow, how did the makeup hold up so well. Um, this lasted through a lot, and I wear it in the shade Patagonia Medium 1.2, and yeah, I think it is a really good product. I see why so many people like it. On top of it all, it's really good coverage as well. So I'm going to dab this all over the skin, and then we will blend it in. I was also seeing some mentions of NARS Sheer Glow Foundation, but mostly it was this, and this was one of the most mentioned things. Just all in all, for all responses on this uh, little survey I did. So as I thought about what I was going to do for this video, I looked through and, you know, I could see that I had certain things in my collection, but there are a few things that were frequently mentioned that I didn't have that I'm really thinking about trying based on the fact that they were so frequently mentioned in this. So here I'm using my Real Techniques Blend and Blur brush. I don't know that I've ever used this brush with this foundation, but I mean, you want to talk about coverage. <laughs> I feel just like blanked out all over the skin. That's really nice coverage. It's a truly full coverage foundation. It is matte, but it's not like dry looking on my skin, particularly if you use a base like Bobbi Brown Vitamin and Rich Face Base. But yeah, I expect this to wear really evenly, really consistently all day long. Now talking about concealer, another thing that I saw a lot of mentions for was the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. And I recently repurchased this. I can't remember what video it was that I was talking about this, but I was discussing how when this first came out, I could have sworn there was a little bit of shimmer in this, and that's kind of what turned me off of the product, because while it's a good tone, I don't want shimmer on the under eye. Now I don't feel like I see any of that shimmer. I just see this really light, brightening tone, and it really takes you like next level brightened on this under eye area. I put a little bit right out here as well. Um, the texture is very creamy. There's a lot of moisture in that product, I think you can see, but at the same time, it's not over the top thick. I feel like it's a decent layering product to where if you wanted to put a little of this on and then maybe work some regular skin tone concealer over that, you'd still be in a good place to do so. I'm going to try to get in focus first. Let me use this Real Techniques brush to blend this out here and you can just see how particularly like on my skin tone how brightening this is on that whole area. And if you're thinking, well, Em, I don't want to spend the high-end money on something like that, but I do love the effect. I think something nearly this brightening is the um, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Brightener. 
um, as I'm looking at this blending out across the skin, there's just like something about the lightness in this tone is really going up a notch for me right in this area, and I'm loving it. But you can really approach this level, I think, with the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. I'm not trying to diminish the goodness of some of these other products when I give an alternative, but I do know that people are watching, in some cases, wanting an alternative or thinking about what they already have in their collection and wanting to know what's similar, and that, in my opinion, is what's similar here. Now, I also saw a surprising amount of mentions for the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Now, does that surprise anyone else? This one's been around for a while. This one goes pre-Shape Tape, right? I wasn't seeing that many mentions for Shape Tape. There were some, but I saw a lot more for this, which just kind of surprised me. Maybe this is one that people feel more strongly about because maybe they've used it going way back and they're still repurchasing. Um, I've got a little mini here, uh, and this is in the shade Creme Brulee Light 2.5. Um, a few mentions for the NARS concealer in the little pot as well, but still, for whatever reason, this was the one that more people were talking about and responding about. So I'm going to give like a little bit of this right in here, just for a little added coverage, a little bit out here too, and the sides of the nose, which is a place where I definitely didn't go putting that pinky shade and a little right down here. Okay. And we just dab over that. And I mean, the coverage is nice on this product. I guess I just have never felt personally super attached to this one. Over top of that Becca, gosh, that looks so good. Um, I don't know if the Becca is maybe offering this one a little extra moisture. I felt like in the past when I've used this, it was a little bit on the dry side for me but maybe when you layer it over an ultra creamy brightener, <laughs> I, the look of it just is so nice and smooth right in here, right in that zone. Love. They're a good combo. I'm also trying to keep it minimal. Maybe I was a victim of over application in the past with that, but it's a really nice smooth looking combo on the skin right now. All right, friends, now we've reached a point in the video that I'm gonna call hourglass time. Coming up, we've got one of the most mentioned things, period, in the whole survey. There were three top mentions. One of them was the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. Um, another one is a product coming up from Hourglass. And then we've got an eye palette that just blew the roof off the whole survey. And that was like the most responded product. For powders, um, I did see mentions of the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Powder. I mean, that's an OG powder. I love that powder. Many of you do also. But what I think was kind of out responding that one was the one from Hourglass. It's called the Veil Translucent Setting Powder, and I have a mini one here. You notice I try to go for minis when I can a lot of times. I actually think I do have a full size of this too, but this is what I'm working through. Now, this reminds me a lot of the experience I have with the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. Um, I really, really like it. Like, I can't really think of a single way to pick this one apart. It's not looking too dry on my skin right now. It's kind of doing the mattifying thing without looking too heavy, which is really what the Laura Mercier does for me as well. It's not like dimming the brightness at all in this zone. Um, there were a lot of mentions of different pressed hourglass powders that you guys like for setting makeup, um, but we'll kind of get there with the next thing. But I'm just kind of dabbing this on the T-zone, and I, I gotta say, like, no complaints. You know, I, I don't know why I don't reach for this more. I don't know why I don't talk about it more. It's a perfectly good quality loose powder, and I'm not really seeing a lot of difference between this and Laura Mercier. If you have experience with both, um, enlighten me. Tell me what you've noticed, because to me, going on the skin, they seem so similar. Really, above all, if I'm going the high-end route and I'm setting my under eye, I'm probably reaching for the Laura Mercier Press, just because I find that a little less fussy and more convenient. But that is a good powder, and I am loving the coverage, the brightness, everything of this look so far. Great recommendations, guys. But one of the most mentioned things, the Hourglass Sculpture Palette. Okay, guys, I've been using the heck out of mine. This is Hourglass's, you know, big holiday six-pan palette for the season. They're big $80, pricey, but is it worth it, you know, kind of palette. And I don't know that I've used a thing during a holiday season or pre-holiday season time more than this, and I've still not totally reviewed this yet. I've brought it out a time or two. I've said I've been wearing it. I have really played with this a lot, seeking to answer the question, is it worth it? To me, I'm going to throw out some opinions here on this. I'm glad this got mentioned a lot because I needed an opportunity to kind of follow up and review this. The things you're getting in here, the um, finishing powder in dim light, the finishing powder in diffused light. 
Those are two, I think, really popular powders, particularly the diffuse light. I actually have that in a single, and that was mentioned individually as something a lot of people like to set their makeup with. So keep that in mind. You've got a highlighter type shade here with the strobe powder in glistening strobe light. Um, the bronzer in natural bronze light, the strobe blush in vibrant flush, and the blush in mood exposure. Um, I'd never tried mood exposure. I know that's an existing blush, and I was really excited to get that chance here. Both blushes, I think, are vibrant and show up on the skin and are really beautiful. I appreciate how well the highlight shows up while not being over the top. A fantastic, just basic setting powder right here, but then you got that dim light where maybe you just want to sweep all over the face with that. I think why people like the texture of these powders so much is that they're very fine powders. They don't load up and cake up on the skin. And when you put a brush into them, you don't pick up like this enormous amount of product. I think they're kind of domed and baked style. Just keeps them from being too, too soft. So they manage to be a very fine powder, but not too soft and creamy. And I think something about that is why people feel like the effect on the skin is so user-friendly across ages. I've seen people say this, but the bronzer in here too. Deep Deep enough to really show. Probably the deepest hourglass bronzer I have experienced, okay? So we've got quality blushes, a really nice bronzer, a highlight that shows, a couple of kind of finishing steps, one that I would call like a nice under eye setting type thing, and one that's really pretty just all over the skin at the end. But could I find nice quality things that are a lot less expensive than this that could still function really well. Yes, I could, but let me put it to you this way. If Hourglass just gave me an empty palette here and put out a bunch of individual pans of things, I feel like the palette I would put together would probably look something like this. If I had all the options, it would probably be something like this because there's contrast. Every single individual thing here does something important, and I do really like the palette. Last year, we were talking about the Unlocked palette. They put out the Ghost Edition, but it was really no change. It was just like a packaging change from the original Unlocked from the year before. And so I was using the original Unlocked throughout a lot of last year's holiday season. I remember multitasking with it a ton uh, because of Bubba and just, you know, liking to have a lot of things in one place. It simplified my life. And I'm kind of feeling the same type of vibe here where it's nice to have so many things in one. Several of these shades could become eyeshadows as well stick the bronzer in the crease, put the highlight on the lid, you're good. Um, but you see what I mean about this bronzer? I'm trying to build it up little by little, but it gives me more color than most any hourglass bronzer I've tried, and I have loved certain hourglass bronzers. I mean, diffuse bronze light, my gosh beautiful bronzer. This is a little deeper than that. You can really feel like you can contour with that shade. I'm using my BK Beauty 107, which is kind of my go-to bronzer brush. But it is a very effective bronzer. I mean, I like this product, and it's clear so many of you are enjoying this as well, and you do feel like it was worthwhile. By far, one of the most popular answers given on my little survey. So, as we can see here, I'm able to contour with this, I'm able to bronze with it, I feel like the tone is kind of really neutral, you know, as far as bronzers go. It's not too warm, not too cool. Hourglass really knows how to do bronzers. Like, if I had to pick a top hourglass thing, just generally speaking, I would say their bronzers are one of the best things they make, and they've got a really good one in here. Um, for blush, which one do we want to use? I'm going to go a little bit lighter, brighter. Let's do the mood exposure. Instantly love this one. It's more rosy than you expect. Um, but there is that little bit of, like, mauve going on in this. I love it. Um, I kind of love how the glow on this one is a little softer, I think, than the glow coming from that one, the more corally option. It's looking so beautiful over just the nice matte texture we've got going on on the skin. I'm feeling kind of a dull skin vibe. I will show you real quick. Like, let's imagine that I just applied concealer. The diffused light can be a nice little setting powder right here. It can also be nice. Um, I found myself a while back kind of going in after my makeup and giving it a little dusting right here on this area that I want to be set and kind of extra bright. Do you see how pretty that effect is? And then maybe you just take the dim light and you give a little sweep of that all over the whole surface of the skin. That's kind of the way I like to use dim light. Let me know what you like to do with that. If you're looking for a dim light dupe, 
think about Milani Prep Set and Glow. Um, that kind of reminds me of that kind of powder that has the most subtle glow. A little bit of like a, a light beigey tone to it, but overall kind of translucent powder, you know. But man, I really like the look on the skin when I'm using all these products. And then the highlighter here. There's nothing chunky in it. There's nothing unnatural about it. In fact, I think it's a fairly subtle highlight. And I think it plays really nicely with everything else here, considering that I think there's a little bit of glow in the bronzer, honestly, like a little satiny finish there. You can get some glow out of the blush too, particularly the one in the center, I feel is a bit more glowy. So I don't need an over the top shiny highlight. It's a highlight that's very nice taken kind of anywhere you want it on the skin. It's hard to screw up. I think it's subtle, but it's enough. Um, I really think it's a good choice. I feel very happy with the skin at this point. Um, I'm going to take my all-nighter setting spray. All-nighter was a big mention, but I have the Ultra Glow version here that I'm still kind of trying to figure out um, if this extends the wear as well as the original, so that's what I'm going to use today. I'm going to be honest with you, maybe I just don't spray enough on, but I never feel like ultra glowy after I apply that. Maybe a little more radiant than if I had just used regular all-nighter, but the OG all-nighter, I can vouch, like that stuff really does help the wear of your makeup all day. The mentions of brow products in this survey were kind of few and far between, but I did see a few shout outs for the ABH Dip Brow Pomade. I have it here in medium brown, and I'm going to use that today. I'm just using my e.l.f. eyebrow brush here is just a little angled brush with a spoolie on the other end and I'm dipping in to my dip brow very carefully because it's just a very very creamy pomade okay I get why people would like this I mean there's no struggle with getting this to show up whatsoever um, if anything for me it's kind of a, a bit more of a struggle to dial yourself back on the application, rein yourself in a little bit and not uh, get too much applied. But I think this was kind of the original, wasn't it, when it comes to pomades? And I think we've seen some brands, you know, put their own spin on it. For me, I really prefer the one from Maybelline, the Tattoo Studio, just because I think it's a little, a little thicker, maybe a little bit drier in texture and while I think all brow pomades are to some extent a little bit fussy um, that one's easier for me. All right, who now has decorated for Christmas already? I have not yet but I plan to this weekend. I kind of want to get it out of the way before Thanksgiving, you know? Like, I love Christmas decor. My house is my favorite when it's all done up for Christmas, you know? But it is a lot of work, and I feel like I need to set aside weekend time to do that, you know, time when I can get Bub lugging up the big boxes from the basement and all that stuff. But I kind of don't want to have to just jump into that after Thanksgiving. I want to have it sort of already done. Now I just want a little clear gel over that. I just grabbed out this one from M cosmetics. It's just their little clear, I think they call it Flexibrow. Definitely a brow gel that um, manages the product well. Not too much comes off on the little wand. Next I'm popping on some Milani eyeshadow primer in preparation for what appeared to me to be the number one answer on this. So yes, I said the NARS Soft Matte Foundation was mentioned a lot. The Hourglass Palette was mentioned a lot. But the thing with the most mentions was definitely the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. Okay, this is Natasha Denona's overall like cool toned palette. Let's give you a good close up here. This is something I received in PR. I've used it a couple times. Um, I, I think it's been all right. I don't think it's my most favorite palette ever, but I'm gonna see if I can turn out a look that I really end up loving from this because you guys were mentioning this like crazy. I mean, there were some other ones mentioned. I think the Biba palette got some mentions. The bronze palette got quite a few, but this one no doubt got the most, like just in, in waves, you know, strings of comments all together saying you like this. So what you may have noticed looking up close at this palette is that the shades are labeled by like their placement on the eyes. So center eyelid, outer eyelid, blend, lash line, uh, crease, transition, stuff like that. And when it came, they suggested different layouts. Like you can pop these out, see the little holes there? You can pop out the pans and rearrange. So they have the original composition, which is what we're looking at um, 
with the way I have it, and then suitable for all dark skin tones, suitable for medium, suitable for light skin tones. So those labels, as you can see, are printed on the palette itself. Those stay in place, but if you shift around the different shades, um, you can get a layout that might be even more custom to your skin tone, which is an interesting little take on that. I don't think we've ever seen anything like that happening with an eye palette. Let's see what happens when I take the shade called Crease and just put it in my crease, okay? I don't know that I've actually put this shade in my crease before, but it's looking like a real natural shadow. Okay, I can dig that. Maybe just all the cool eyeshadow lovers are just a little more vocal right now because there's, you know, always I feel like a lot more warm stuff that comes out. So once you feel like you got your hands on this one, you're like, yeah, there's more enthusiasm for this one for that reason, you know? That's the shade labeled Crease. Um, now let's take some of this one called Smoke. So just a real neutral brown, kind of deep. I'm gonna put some of that in my crease too. Natasha Denona palettes as a whole, like the price is so up there, you've really got to kind of think it through before you go ahead and purchase. Like, do I really want or need this? Is this my color scheme? Is this something I think I'm gonna use a lot? But the quality on many of them is really, really consistent and nice. And I think they are very user-friendly. I think this one's sought to be even more user-friendly than anything, what with the labeling of how to use the different parts. Okay, so that's kind of a mixture of this crease shade and smoke right there. And I feel like now's the time I wanna go a little bit darker in the outer corner. They've got a lot of shades labeled for lid that have some shimmer. Um, even outer lid is like a shimmery shade, but a deeper one. I wanna take this lash line color and actually um, apply some of that to the outer part here. So we can get a really like rich look going. The part of this palette that leaves me maybe just a little bit deflated is the thought that there's not a lot of deep darkness, like as in terms of mattes. There's this, and I realize this could work alongside literally any shimmer shade in the palette, but you know, I like a little variety in the dark shades in a palette, especially one that's going to be, you know, this is 5, 10, 15 shades. Give me two, three nice dark options to go into. But this, for being as dark as it is, it's like a near black. Um, it's like a dark, dark charcoal. And that was able to go on very easy, not patchy, not clinging to any one area too much. And now after I use a shade like that, where I've really made the effort to get it both on the lid and up into the crease, I just take my starting out crease brush and help it merge in with what was already in the crease. And this is where I get the most seamless looking blend. The quality is pretty hard to argue with, I gotta say. Mm, pretty good. Um, what about this shade called Transition right up here? Like, it's a really, like, world's lightest gray. I wonder what that even looks like. Yeah, it, it doesn't really stand out a whole lot as its tone. You know, like maybe if you packed it on, you would see that color more, but otherwise it does just kind of soften the edge, which is kind of sometimes what you want the transition to do, I suppose. Okay, I'm looking up close. I don't think I'm seeing any fallout. I'm seeing a really smooth blend there. I'm happy with that. I want to go to some of these shades I haven't used yet. Like I've kind of used some of the pinky, like the ones that veer a little bit on the pink tone side. But I wanna go over here to like these two. This one called Center Eyelid. Um, kind of a grayish, smoky. Let's put that on the center eyelid. Little gray, silvery shimmer. Ooh, that's pretty. Mm, might just be starting to get one over here. Like, I, I like how it's not blinding silver chrome, you know, but it's just like a really pretty sheen on that one. Love that. Okay, and then let's go to inner corner with the one right next door here. If you have this palette, have you tried rearranging the shades? Love 
Love that. The thing that can make it confusing is if we're all going and rearranging the shades and then getting on and trying to share a tutorial and it's like shades don't have a clear label so you're like it's the one that used to be in center called center eyelid on the far right before I moved it around. <laughs> okay now I'm really trying to go down into that tear duct area with that same shade. Ooh. I'm liking the haze. I'm liking the glowy lid. If you got this palette, I suggest really going for it with that lash line shade in your outer corner because I hadn't really done that yet. I've been just kind of using some of the deeper shimmers that said outer eyelid and I really, really like that look. Now I'm going to take lash line with a pencil brush. I'm just going to get a little bit on the outside and then I think I'll choose a different um, deeper shimmer to kind of smoke out the rest of this. Like let's use outer eyelid right here. Deeper kind of gunmetal shimmer. If you have this palette and you love this palette, talk to me a little bit in the comments section about the versatility and if you feel like it's versatile enough. Or are you one who loves the palette and you also kind of love doing the same sort of look all the time? Do you feel like there's enough color versatility? Do you feel like you're doing different looking looks at all times? The last thing I might do is just take a little more of this blend color, which I don't think I've used in this look yet. So that's a shade that I know I've started out in the crease with in the past. And I'm just taking a little bit of that over the darkness here. That's the shade that's got like a little hint of warmth, just a little bit. The thing I like about this look is it really wasn't hard. It came together pretty effortlessly. I think I'm going to stop there. Um, I don't know that I had an eyeliner, a clear eyeliner winner. Yeah, I really wasn't seeing um, an eyeliner winner, but the top mascara, one of the top ones I saw mentioned was actually Thrive, and um, Thrive Blush had a decent amount of mentions too, but I was definitely, as you could see, using the hourglass today. I'm just going to keep the eye how it is. I'm really liking that look. I don't even want to put any liner on with it. I'm going to use my Shiseido lash curler. If you want the full scoop on this one, you got to check out my uh, bite-sized reviews. I have a lot to say about this. All I'll say right now is I think a favorite has been dethroned with this Shiseido. Now Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions, it's a tubing mascara and I really would reserve this one for lower lashes because I felt like, okay, it's not going to smudge at all. And then I reached a point where I found that I thought it was really smudging, <laughs> actually. I had gotten a new tube and I didn't know what was going on, but like in an area where I once had no transfer of product with it, I was starting to see it. Now, I wonder if part of that could be maybe, you know, putting a little less under eye setting powder on my concealer and maybe there's too much moisture coming from my under eye concealer and that's grabbing product. But it really, you know, good lord. What I'm getting at here is it really shouldn't be causing me any problems. You know, it's a tubing mascara. The Hourglass one, the their tubing instant extensions mascara really doesn't create any issues for me there. Let's give this one another try today down here on lower lashes and upper lashes on the upper lashes, as you can see, it's not bad. With that fantastic curl, it's really looking actually quite good. But this tube's got a little age on it. And when I put brand new Thrive on my upper lashes, I'm a little underwhelmed. So it's in a good place to look a little fuller on the upper lashes today. I'm actually really, really happy with the way the lashes are looking right now. And overall, what you can expect from a tubing mascara is that it shouldn't smudge or flake off because like it's just the composition of the product it comes off in like little rubbery bits is how I've always explained it like once you take your makeup off you look at your washcloth or your wipe and you can just see how it's basically like loosened from the eye and come off in its own little part so there I've got that upper and lower lashes. Finally, guys, for lips, um, the top mention I would have to say was Charlotte Tilbury, uh, the Matte Revolution lipsticks. A lot of people actually just answering Matte Revolution and not giving a specific shade, but there was a lot of buzz about that. And then also um, quite a few mentions for the Too Faced Melted Matte, the four pack for this holiday season, which I know I gave major praise to and I think is a fantastic thing right about now if you don't want the transfer off, if you want a really nice 
nice selection of shades. I will link below to my try on of that, but that's a really good set. So since I've talked about the Too Faced fairly recently, I thought I would bust out some of the Matte Revolution lipsticks that I haven't used in a while. I've got a real favorite shade here that I have loved. It's called Bond Girl. I feel like I've duped this before. Let me look into that and refresh my memory. Gosh, there's a great smell on these. It's a really beautiful soft red, okay? You can't go wrong with that shade. I think that would be beautiful on so many skin tones. But then I also have the color called Glastonbury. And if you look at that next door, obviously more purple in it, more berry in it. Um, think MAC Rebel, um, if you're familiar with that lipstick. That's what that one kind of reminds me of. And that's the one I'm gonna use today is Glastonbury. Some of the precision of this lipstick has worn down a bit, so forgive me if I'm not very neat. A lot of people probably really like these because they're the, kind of the comfort of just using a standard lipstick, but there's creaminess here yet you still get the matte look if that's what you're after. Probably could have exfoliated my lips first on this one. That's okay. I haven't really gone this dark on my lips in a while, but if you sheer this out, if you were to give this a little bit of a blot, um, you would see a little bit more of the berry coming through. Let's do that real quick. Just so you can see, this kind of reminds me of like Revlon's Black Cherry in that it has layers. Give it a little blot. See how it's looking a little more berry now um, after you do that? So just keep that in mind. It's got layers and levels it can operate on. Gosh, guys, I'm really happy with the look. I think you gave some amazing recommendations in my little survey. Um, if I were to think of the things that really wowed me the most, I was really feeling that complexion combo, honestly, with the soft matte, and then we brought in the Becca Brightener and topped it off with just a little bit of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, and everything came away looking so smooth yet skin-like right in this area. So that impressed me a lot. I really am a fan of that Hourglass Sculpture Palette. Um, if you're looking for kind of a fancy gift for someone, I think 100% of what's in there would get used. I love every part of it. The Glam Palette, once I brought in the dark shade, um, I was really, you know, starting to kind of vibe with that palette at that point. And then seeing that beautiful kind of silver, but not pure silver sheen on the lid. Yeah, it's it's speaking to me. I get it. I think I'm starting to understand the popularity of that one. So yeah, if you didn't get a chance to weigh in on my little survey, feel free to let us all know what you think in the comments section. What is your most irreplaceable, most worthwhile high-end purchase you've made recently? Let us all know, and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye!